My name is Dr. Kevin Klamako. I am a practicing U.S. Army General Surgeon, and this is Med School Insiders Why I Did. As a practicing general surgeon in the U.S. Army, I'm fortunate enough to take care of our country's finest and bravest men, women, and their families as well. We also get a chance to take care of veterans and their families. From a day-to-day -day perspective, really it could be anywhere from a clinic day to managing my own inpatients to operating. And with regards to the types of surgeries I do, I do anything from thyroids to weight loss surgery to cancer surgeries. It really is a very broad, exciting, and varied field. I was first exposed to the medical profession as a child. I was fortunate enough that my family uh, used to run a lot of medical and humanitarian missions in the Philippines where I was born. And throughout the years, I was able to help out in these missions. You know, I remember distinctly as a seven-year-old handing out little snacks to the patients and their families. And then as I got older, helping out with paperwork and moving supplies. And then finally as a medical student, helping out in the medical side of things. And then as a resident physician, um, actually operating and doing um, real life surgeries. My pathway to being a surgeon took a little bit of a side turn in college because I did the nerdiest form of rebelling by saying that I did not want to go in the medical field because a lot of my family members were in the medical field. And my nerdy way of re rebelling was trying to do something else like economics, which is my undergrad major, love economics. And then I minored in public health and chemistry as well. But every time we went back to the Philippines and I got to see the impact, the lives changed, the amount of joy that medicine and surgery brought, that kind of turned me around around junior year of college and that's when I decided I was gonna be a doctor. So in undergrad, when I first went in, I was undeclared. Um, it's okay to be undeclared. Um, I kept my options broad, but as I moved throughout, I still did the pre-med track. And as I moved throughout the years, I, after my junior year is when I really hammered down that I wanted to be a doctor. I did not take any gap years, but during those last two and a half years, I really honed down and wanted to make sure that my CV was up to par. So I did a bunch of extracurriculars. I did a bunch of research. I did a bunch of shadowing as well. When I was applying for medical school, I was considering several factors. One was the level of training, location, but also cost. Um, I wanted to be practical and realistic about it. So I applied broadly and I initially at first didn't think that the military was going to be for me because the advice that I had gotten was that if you're only gonna do the military for money, you shouldn't do it because you'll be miserable. And when I first thought about it, it was only gonna be for the money. But the more research I did, the amount of leadership opportunities, ability to be there um, in disaster zones, ability to help out with humanitarian missions, the ability to take care of, as I alluded to before, our bravest men and women. All these things started to factor in and made me want to go into the military. As far as med schools, I applied to a bunch of civilian schools, but I also applied to this little known school in Maryland, D.C. area called the Uniformed Services University, or USIS. It is the military's only medical school. And what I found in this school was that it really merged everything that I wanted in a medical school. It provided exceptional training. It allowed me to travel across the country and travel across the world. It allowed me to take care of the best patient population. It allowed me to work with like-minded people who are all motivated, leaders, team-oriented, and really wanted to serve. And as an added bonus, we got our whole med school paid for and we got a salary um, on top of it. Med school, surprisingly to myself, was the best four years of school that I had ever done. I thought med school was gonna be horrible, it was gonna be a big grind, but in medical school, I was finally learning and experiencing 
in contributing to the field that I had wanted to do. So that was surprisingly the easy part. The hard part to me of medical school is just the vast amount of information that one had to learn and knowing the consequences of not knowing that information. USIS, or the Uniformed Services University for the Health Sciences, is similar in civilian medical schools in that you cover the same information, except you cover it in a year and a half. That's the classroom portion. And then for the two and a half years after that, you're doing the clinical portion. And this clinical portion can occur at any one of the U.S. military's sites. So for example, even though I was a U.S. Army USIS student, I was still able to go to San Diego to do family med and psych with Dr. Kevin Jubal of MedSchoolInsiders.com. I was able to go to the Seattle area for radiology. I was able to go to Guam uh, Naval Hospital Guam for a critical care rotation. I was able to go to Germany for a surgery rotation. So I was able to really travel across the world. The other awesome thing about USIS is that we got trained extra. So every year we ran field exercises where we simulated um, battles, taking care of casualties, setting up bases, learning how to put chest tubes in in austere environments. So really, USIS to me is med school plus. I can't particularly think of a single event that made me want to become a general surgeon. Ultimately, I think it was the summation of my entire ex life experience and end goal. Seeing the immediacy, but also long lasting effects of surgery really moved me. And I always thought that if I was gonna work hard at something, I wanted to work hard at something worth doing. And general surgery is just one of those fields. It is exceedingly difficult, but all the more so rewarding. Interestingly enough, I thought that I could do any specialty except for psych and neurology. Not because I did not like psych, I actually really enjoyed my psych rotation with Dr. Kevin Jubal, founder, CEO, Med School Insiders. Genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist. But the reason I didn't think I could do neurology and psych was because to me, they were too difficult for my personality. I, did, I think they were too emotionally demanding for myself, but also I didn't like the fact that there was no, at least my perception, clear end goal. Whereas with surgery, it's more of a see problem, fix problem. With surgery, I can still manage the physiology, fight the pathophysiology, incorporate the anatomy, fend off the microbio. It was just all these different specialties coming together. And even more so for, as an army general surgeon, when we're deployed, we might be able, we, we might be called to be that emergent obstetrician, that emergent neurosurgeon, the emergent orthopedic surgeon. And I think just the summation of my experience made me want to do general surgery. If I had to choose another specialty, there are two that I can think of. I think I could see myself doing ENT because um, I really enjoy the anatomy um, and the physiology involved and they still see clinic, they still see manage, they still manage um, some aspects of the overall person. And thyroids are my favorite surgery, even though I'm a general surgeon. The other specialty I could see myself doing is family medicine, especially in the military. Our family medicine physicians are exceptional. They run hospitals, They're, they can do OB stuff, they can do PED stuff, they still do procedures um, like vasectomies, soft tissue, um, excision. So I think the two specialties if I wasn't doing general surgery that I could see myself doing are ENT and, uh, ENT and FEMED. My experience in residency was outstanding. Certainly it was a very difficult six years and the US Army, at least as the time of this recording, um, the Army residencies are six years. Five years of that are clinical, just like everywhere else in the country. And then one year of that is for research. I did my general surgery 
residency in the great city of El Paso, Sun City. My overall experience was outstanding and I would recommend it to anyone. However, it was exceedingly difficult as well. Right? I, don't, I don't want to sugarcoat it. I want people to know that if you're going to go into general surgery, it will be difficult. My program was mostly a Southwest program. So though we were based out of El Paso, we still had trauma rotations two to three months out of the year in either Phoenix or Dallas-Fort Worth area where we had a bunch of civilian partners. We were also able to work with several local civilian hospitals um, to bolster our numbers and bolster our experience. My favorite part of my specialty is at the end of an operation or clinic visit or during rounds. When I get to see that patient and I know that I have impacted or changed their lives forever. That to me is a great privilege and great responsibility. And I, I cherish that to this day. The two least favorite parts of general surgery, in my opinion, are one, the hours needed. Now, certainly you can tailor that based on your practice, but surgery does require some level of commitment, some level of expertise, and you will have to put in the hours to make sure that the people you're taking care of have good outcomes. The other negative to general surgery is that when you're seeing that sickest of the sick patient and they don't do well, that's, that's difficult. When, and, and the surgeons, we do deal with that population of the, of the sickest of the sick. Knowing what I know now, I don't think I would change my career trajectory. I think I would still be a general surgeon. I think I would still choose to be a surgeon in the US Army. Medical students who would be a good fit for general surgery are those medical students that have a variety of interests and who are interested not just in anatomy, but also physiology, pathophysiology, micro, farm. Those are all important as a surgeon. You also have to be able to adjust to difficult situations. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable and you have to be willing to put the patient first. I think that mindset has to come into play as a general surgeon, maybe not 24 seven, but when that patient is critically ill, we need surgeons who are willing to do the job to get that person better. General surgery in the US Army versus general surgery in the civilian world has similarities and it has its differences. So in terms of similarity, the level of training, similar. The pathology covered, also similar. However, it is dissimilar in that our civilian counterparts probably get paid much better than we do. They may be a little bit more focused in terms of their practice than we are. And they may have more logistical support in terms of NPs, PAs. As an army general surgeon, I am still expected to be a surgeon surgeon. That is to be a head to toe surgeon, especially in the deployed setting, which in the civilian world, they may be getting away from that, especially if you're at bigger uh, metropolitan cities where there's several subspecialists. Whereas if you're deployed and somebody is shot in the neck, well, you're, you're their neck surgeon. And if somebody breaks their bone and there's no ortho support, you're their ortho surgeon. We're still also expected as US Army surgeons to be able to manage our own patients. Again, I know in, in some hospitals, they're moving away from uh, surgeons managing comorbidities, but as a US Army surgeon at several hospitals and several deployed settings, you're, you are expected to manage not only routine patients, but critically ill patients. If you are a medical student with a sense of adventure, who's wanting to push their limits to better themselves, who's really interested in being a leader, in working in teams, in serving the underserved, in serving those who are in the front lines, then I think you should really consider joining or becoming a US Army surgeon or physician. A piece of advice that I would give 
any medical student interested in becoming a general surgeon or a U.S. Army physician would be this. Know the cost of what you're trying to pursue and also know what are the things most important to you. Speaking to the first part of things, know the cost of becoming a general surgeon. Know the hours involved. Know the amount of work you have to put in. Know the amount of information you need to start to take in and know the consequences of not getting that information. I think if you know the cost up front during those hard times, you're gonna be like, well, I knew what I was getting myself into. The other thing about knowing the cost is that you also know the benefit. And if you know the true benefit of things, and you know the cost of things, then when the times get hard, you can tell yourself, man, the benefit of what I'm doing far outweigh this cost. The second part of that advice is also knowing what's important to you. I think it's so easy in this very fast paced life, whatever it may be. I grew up, I said in the Philippines in the Northeast, right? New York City, Boston, DC. It's so easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of things and always looking to, for that next, what's my next goal? Okay, what do I need to do next? Slow down, figure out what's important to you. Is sleep important to you? Then address that. Is your family important to you? Address that. Is your health, social life, are those things important to you? Relationships, address that and find time for that. So I would say those are, would be my two pieces of advice for anyone wanting to pursue these things. If you're interested in more information on how to become a US Army surgeon, visit goarmy.com forward slash amen. And if you're a pre-med or medical student wanting to become a general surgeon, army or not, be sure to visit medschoolinsiders.com. And that's why I did US Army general surgery. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and hit those bell notifications. <laughs> <laughs>